My name is Mary Caracoli. I am the host of a show you may have seen. It's called We Are What. It is on Channel 6, Sundays at 1 usually, and also on the Live Well Network on Monday and Thursdays. And uh, I have spent the last 20 some years covering money and business and helping families around the country deal with today's you know, economy, the realities of today's economy. And my philosophy is pretty simple. I believe that you can have the life you want to have. It just may mean resetting some expectations and changing some things. It's a lot of fun to shop here, but what I want to help you do today is something I like to call find the money in your house. Because you want to pay for these things, right? I don't want people going in debt to make these changes. I want you to be able to find some of that money in your house. And I have three simple strategies. These are things that you can do at home this weekend, get it started, that will, I guarantee you, find you money in your house. And the reason I can say this so assuredly is that I travel the country, I have been coast to coast, and in the middle, working with regular families, and in each house I find them something. And the three tools that have worked the best for me are the three I'm gonna share with you today. So let's get things started. Number one, I like to call this audit yourself. Let's keep the IRS out of this, right? We don't need them involved. This is auditing yourself. Go through all of your bills, everything. Get out the checkbook register, go through the credit card bills. If you have a stack of cash receipts, go through those. Go through all of your spending. I want you to pay attention to it. Okay, okay, big deal. Uh, I have car insurance bill. I don't want you to just blow by it and say, I had a car insurance bill. How much did you pay for that? How old is your car? Are you paying a fortune for collision and really you don't need it? And maybe all you really need is liability? Remember, if you have an old car, it's gonna get totaled. So if you're paying a fortune to get that car repaired, you're never gonna see it. So as I say, every year we examine little things like that. Look at where can I bundle things? I worked with a gal Rachelle in Delaware who is paying $150 a month for a storage unit for furniture that in total wasn't worth $150. She was paying $150 a month to keep things in storage. So got rid of that stuff. But only by going through line by line and not just writing down what you pay, but thinking about it. I promise you, it will be hundreds of dollars just in doing that. And you may find some real traps and save thousands of dollars. So try this. This is going to work for you. The other thing you're going to notice with this one, are you paying your bills on time? Did you find there were late fees? And all of a sudden, you'll realize, hey, you know what? There is no excuse. I am going to pay this early. I really hate paying that extra 35 bucks a month in a late fee. That was money wasted. It gets you organized for the year. So it pays dividends beyond what I wanted to do for you today. So that was the boring one. Audit yourself. Any questions about that before I go forward? All right, pretty straightforward, right? Second one. This one's a little more fun. Audit your stuff. It's worth doing because what you'll find is there's stuff you no longer need. Or there's stuff you treasure and you're not storing it correctly. So by taking the time to essentially do an inventory of your possessions, and I'm talking about the stuff that's packed away that you're not paying any attention to. Not so much the couch and the TV. You see those every day. The stuff you're not paying any attention to. Take some time and really look through that. And you're gonna do two things from that. You're gonna find what you really treasure. You're gonna make sure you're storing it correctly. And is it properly insured? Is it something of value that you may want to make sure you have extra insurance on? So that's the one side of it. The other side is getting rid of it, right? The stuff you don't want anymore. 
and there's a couple of ways to do that. One is if you know it's not really special and it, it won't get much money, but it could do some good for someone, donate it. You get the tax benefit, right? Everybody donates, right? But this is an organized way for you to do it. Get the receipt, you have it for tax purposes. The other is to sell. Now, a couple of different ways to do this. There's Craigslist, there's eBay. If you have something that you think may be special or you just don't know if it's special, maybe it's a piece of artwork, I highly suggest you get it appraised. And I'd like to recommend using an appraiser who has no interest in buying or selling the item, they're going to give you the most objective price of what that item is. Do you want to know what it's worth? Take the time to do that if you think it's special or you have no clue. Know what you have. Do a little research. With the internet now, it is so easy for all of us to do research. There's no excuse. Every library's got free internet access. If you don't have it at home, hop on, check it out, see what your item is. Look for the name. Is there a name underneath it? Is there an artist's name or is it a collectible? Describe it. Take a picture of it. Get familiar with it. There are people all over this country, we've all seen the shows, where they had what they thought was junk and it was a treasure. I did a few stories on selling on eBay and selling on Craigslist. If you have a very expensive brand name piece, I actually don't recommend you sell on Craigslist unless you're really good at spotting scammers. Because I have found when I put stuff on Craigslist, if it's a brand name, and it was over $500, all of a sudden, I'll wire you the money. Can you ship it to Florida? Why would you want my shabby chic couch shipped to Florida? You know, it's, so it's a scam. It's a scam, and there's a lot of them. And they want your bank account information so they can wire that money directly to you. So if you are selling, I just want you to be careful in how you do it but I've sold to many terrific people who are just like you and I, who just, hey, that's a deal, I'm looking for that and I want to get it. So here are some of my rules of engagement if you're gonna sell on Craigslist. Pretty simple. One is that you have an email that is not your work email. Gmail and Hotmail, and there's so many free email, Yahoo, you can set up free email, something that's not your work email. That gives you some privacy, okay? So I recommend having one of those kind of accounts. Number two, meet in a neutral location. You know, a nearby church, a, a grocery store. You don't have to bring them to your house. There's no reason to do that. For one of my segments, we sold some kids' items, and I had the woman's first time selling, had her meet somebody at a grocery store parking lot. The woman was really happy to do that because she was uh, the buyer. We were really leery about going to a stranger's house to buy stuff. So it was actually preferable to, to both people. And that's, and you can tell pretty quickly with the email exchanges if somebody's serious and if they're real. And, and I have had numerous wonderful exchanges with people. And what you find is, oftentimes, a buyer who will be a repeat buyer because you have the things that they want. You have similar taste. eBay's okay. I, they take a commission. Craigslist is, is straight profit for you. So, you know, it, but you get a national audience that way. And sometimes it's worth putting something up there with a higher reserve so you make sure you get the most money for the item. Those are some tricks if you're going to try to sell it yourself. But I, I, you'll find that stuff you've been hoarding, you don't need it anymore. If it has been in your closet for 20 years, why? Why are you keeping it? And that's clothes, that's kids stuff. You know, this is all stuff that you can go through and what doesn't sell, donate. Give yourself the gift of decluttering and you'll love having that extra space. It really is one of those things that's gonna add your quality of life. So those are my tips for auditing your stuff. And I like to do that once a year. Don't do it the same weekend you audit your bills. You'll go on brain overload. Pick a different weekend for that. But this is a great time of year because we're stuck inside and it just gives you a nice chore to do to go through stuff. And then springtime and summer, you're gonna have that extra room in your house and the extra cash. So what's the third one? 
audit your energy use. Little changes can make a big difference. There are a lot of companies that do this. A lot of electric companies will offer either a free or a discounted program to do an assessment in your home. So start there. Other firms that are reputable, that will be recommended by your electric company will charge probably 100 bucks, 150 bucks to come out and do an assessment. There's also, and I'll have it on my website, moneyconfidant.com, a way for you to do it yourself for free. It won't be as good as a professional, okay? But it'll be a pretty good test for you. It'll show you where the big problems are. What they do, they will find where you're losing money. There are so many inexpensive ways to make a difference. And if you're ready to make that investment, if you're like, well, no, I've got old windows, I'm ready to, to, to make a bigger investment for my energy use, then there are still some rebates and government loans available to pay for them. So really low interest loans. So if you're thinking about doing some of these renovations or some home repairs, you may be able to get find really low financing to pay for them. And the difference you're going to see in your monthly electrical bill is going to be significant. And I, I, oftentimes, it'll pay for the price of whatever you're putting in. That's when you're doing the smaller stuff. The bigger things like the geothermal units or fuel cells, they're a much longer term investment. It'll take you about a decade to get that to pay for itself. But they will. They will over time. If you're not going to be in a house more than, say, five or seven years, you may want to hold off on those really big ticket item changes. So think about that when you're making your decision. So if you're thinking about energy, do the cheap stuff first. And it's a lot of the stuff you can do yourself. Get out there, insulate, get you seal up any leaks, those window fill things, they work really well. And if you do it right, they actually look pretty good too. A lot of these things are super easy to do. I want you to take some time. I'll put all of these links on my website. Stuff you can do for free. Sources where you can get rebates from the electric company, rebates from the government. In some cases, there are still a few federal tax uh, incentives for some changes you're making. So I will list all of those on my website if that's an area you're interested in doing. But these three steps, Auditing yourself through your bills. Auditing your stuff. Go, taking inventory of your stuff. And auditing your energy use is going to put money back in your pocket. How much? Say the bills end up being, I get a, a pretty big hit from that. The average family is about $800 that I've worked with by auditing their bills on an annual basis, saving about $800 a year on an annual basis. Selling stuff, it depends on the family. I've had families who've made a couple hundred dollars through garage sales. And I've had a lot of families who've made you know, $1,000, $1,500 because they had things to clear out and they took the time to do it. If you're going to sell, if you have stuff to sell, make it look good online. Take a picture, get a clean white sheet, put it behind the item. Make sure if it's an article of clothing, that it's ironed, it's pressed, it looks good. If it's a toy, it's cleaned up, get the dust off it. Take your picture with a clean white background like that. It'll pop, it'll look good, and it'll be something that's going to say, oh, you know, nobody wants somebody else's problems, right? But they do want your treasures. Make it look like a treasure if you're going to sell it. And that, like I said, it depends on the family, but it can be you know, roughly about $1,500 is what I've seen with the families. The energy audits, nationally, the average is $500, saves you annually. I've had a little more luck with some of the families I've worked with. It's been about $750 to about $850 that where we've saved some money. Uh, it can easily be $2,500 to $5,000 a year in savings. Pretty attractive stuff, right? So it's about taking the time to do it. And I want to remind you, all the links to the stuff I'm talking about will be on my website. It is moneyconfidant.com. And I will have all of that information just so you can find it. I want to leave you with this. If we did all the things we're capable of doing, we would literally astound ourselves. 
so often we think the money stuff in our life, we can't do it. We're not the money people. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. I have worked with families all over the country who didn't think they could do it. And by taking the time and taking these steps, these are simple steps, but taking the time to follow through and do them, you are gonna see that change in your life and you're gonna shock yourself of what you're capable of. And if what I'm talking about today seems like really simple to you, then work with others to help them do it. Show people how easy it is to lead by example. So if you want to find me on Facebook, I don't know if that's what you're interested in. I, the website's moneyconfidant.com, Facebook, The Money Confidant, and Twitter, Money Confidant, with no that. <laughs> so if you want to stay in touch, please do so. And you know, it's really important to me that all of us take the time to share our victories. And the other thing I want you to share are the, the things that have been hard financially. Because I think as we kind of get rid of the taboo of the money stuff, it is a new, a new normal for this economy. As we do that and we share it with our friends, our family, our neighbors, we're going to all realize we're in this together and we're not alone. A lot of families that I talk to, you know, husband or the wife, they tell me how they just thought they were the only one. They didn't think anybody else was going through what they're going through. And we all know that's not true. So I just ask you to share your story with friends, share your information with them, and I think we're all gonna find a way to make this new normal something that's profitable for all of us. Thank you so much for taking time to stop by today. I enjoyed speaking with you. Thank you.